When I first began studying correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, I had three simple goals. The first goal was, of course, to master the technology. The second goal was to write contract using the grammar. And the third goal was to teach. Now, I achieved those three goals, and I maintained performance of those goals. In relation to the third goal, teaching, I started a YouTube channel at the beginning of 2018. And the function and purpose, the overall purpose that I had in mind for the channel was to create videos, create a collection of knowledge, collection of videos that were short, anywhere from two to five minutes or six minutes, whatever, with little bits of correct sentence structure knowledge in them because I knew at the time and even more so today that the majority of the audience does not have the longest attention span. The cell phone has decreased the attention span of society. That's my theory. So that was my my purpose at first. And of course, I went with the things that I was strongest with, which I find with most people is the par se, because it's the easiest thing to research. It's the easiest thing to get a grasp on, because anybody can find the syllables of a word, and anyone can look in an etymology dictionary and find out the nativity root means of what a word is, the earliest nativity root means of what a word is in the fiction. Anybody can do it. So that's those are the videos that I began sharing. As I began getting more and more closure on the grammar, then I started sharing correct sentence structure, communication videos, and also syntax videos. And as I began doing that, I began realizing that the way Colin David Eiffelwin Colin Miller would teach the grammar is that he would give a very basic rudimentary example of how to do something. But from my mind, I never really saw him explain and give a depth of closure of why things worked the way they worked. And it was puzzling to me also because I began noticing contradictions in his teachings, in the videos themselves. Like in the same video, he would contradict himself. Just one small example that I will give. And uh, Colin Russell, Ivan J. Colin Gould, David's student, would share these things too. They talk about judge mechanics. Rule one, rule equal. How when you're a judge, the first your first order of business is to establish knowledge. Get the whole story before moving forward, right? And then in the same video, they would go on and say, when you see a document and you see the word the, you go in and put a number one above it because it's an adverb. That is a direct violation of the judge mechanics that they themselves taught. Because if you just go in and label the word the a one in a document, any the you see, you're not looking at the whole picture. You're just looking at the the. Because a the can be an adverb, a verb, or a pronoun. It can be any one of those three things. So that's just one example out of a multitude of examples of contradictions. But I began to notice this. So I began a different, a new function and purpose for my channel, and that was to try to convey the why behind the mechanics that I was teaching. And then as I went along, the way that I taught and the information I shared sort of veered off down a different path than those old videos from David Wynn Miller. In the sense that my main priority was to be correct and to have no contradictions and to be able to explain why things happened the way they happened, not only how they happened, but why they happened, and to give closure on that. 
rather than just say, well, David said this, and David did it this way, and David said that. Because for anyone who has studied the trivia method or studied logic knows that that is a clear logical fallacy. It is an appeal to authority. Meaning you're giving someone else's closure. You're not getting yours. That means that you don't know what you're talking about if you're saying that, well, David said so. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to have the closure right there and also give venues and avenues for closure for anyone who wanted to study it. So then I began creating those types of videos that went into a depth of closure heretofore not seen on the internet, which, I mean, that's a guess on my part. If, if there are videos out there that have the depth of closure that mine do, please share. I'd appreciate it because I have never seen one. Never seen a channel that has had over 300 correct sentence structure videos on it. Um, just haven't seen it. I know there are new channels coming out, but I'm saying at the time that I created my channel, it just wasn't there. So those are my goals. And I achieved those goals using correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. As I was going along doing this and sharing the whys of the hows, so to speak, then I began introducing at the same time what I called the psychology of the grammar, which was a pretty new concept. I had never seen that in a video either. Someone, you know, David or Russell talking about the psychology of why and how one would use this stuff. And people ask me all the time about this psychology thing. And I explain it in a multitude of places, in a multitude of videos I come at it from every different angle that I can possibly think of to convey what it means, what I'm talking about. When I say the psychology is the biggest challenge for most people in learning this grammar. And just to give you an example, as a teacher, as a tutor, I've been teaching this since February of 2018. And I've taught hundreds of people. I've met hundreds of people all over the earth. And I have found that the psychology is the biggest challenge. And one of the situations that happens and one of the vetting things, uh, vetting tools that I use, or I should say flags, red flags, I can pretty much tell when someone has closure on the rudiments of the grammar and when one doesn't. I can tell by the way one speaks. For example, in the comments section, if someone claims that they've been studying correct sentence structure for five years, 10 years, 20 years, whatever it is, if someone claims that they've been a student of Russell or a student of David or they knew David personally and they say certain things, I can tell by what they're saying in adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, in plain English, I can tell by the concepts that they're conveying whether or not they really do have a rudimentary closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may ask, how can you tell that? If you don't see them using the grammar, how can you tell what their knowledge is or isn't if they haven't offered it? I can guess their knowledge level just by the simple fact of whether they are aware of rule one, rule equal, judge mechanics, or they're not. So to put it another way, if someone goes around telling others what they should or shouldn't do, that tells me that they do not have closure on correct sentence structure. Because if they did, they wouldn't do that. They would know that that is a trespass, a violation of rule one, rule equal. If I see someone claiming to be a commander in chief or a chief federal postal judge, and they claim, now they're just claiming those things in and of themselves. Like to say that, like I did a video on this not too long ago, it's like a cheeky video where being a commander 
in chief of oneself. That's fine. You can claim that. A commander, a federal postal judge of your own construct. You can claim that. But when you start saying that you are commander in chief of others, or that you're the chief federal postal judge and you're the authority over others, you're claiming authority over other live creatures, that's when I know that you do not have closure on the grammar because you do not, obviously do not comprehend rule one, rule equal. Either that, or you are consciously violating it because you are now unleveling the geometric level playing field of contract. As a man, I establish a geometric level playing field of contract. No one is above me. No one is below me. I don't claim to be a commander over anyone else except myself. I don't claim to be a chief federal anything unless it is myself and my own construct. I don't claim to have commandership over others. I mean, you can go into situations like that where someone consents to it. Like in the military or something, you can consent to someone having authority over you. But you go into that knowing that that's violating rule one, rule equal. In that specific psychological scenario. Now, there are other ways in other situations that I won't go into here where it doesn't do that. But in the general sense that I'm sharing this, people are in the public claiming to have some kind of authority over the earth, having some kind of authority over other live creatures. And they're using a quasi quantum grammar to claim this and people buy into it. That's a violation of rule one, rule equal. And if you're out there claiming those types of things, then I can either guarantee that number one, you do not have closure on the grammar or number two, you are purposely violating rule one, rule equal to maintain some sort of control or perhaps to make money or create some sort of false aura. I don't know. Whatever it is. But it isn't. I can pretty much guarantee that if people that do that do not have closure on the grammar and if you bring me their correct set and structured documents or if even you, if you have a rudimentary closure on your grammar, look at their documents, you will see mistakes all over the documents. Whether it's spacing with the colons, whether it's using particle of negation in the facts without the proper mechanics, whether it's using the wrong verb, whether it's using the wrong positional sequencings, whether it's using excessive spacing, it, there's a multitude of mistakes on these documents from these people that claim some sort of authority over others. And that's how I can tell whether someone has closure on the grammar or not that claims that they do just by the way they speak plain English and the concepts and ideas that they share. I have found that correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar, i.e. quantum grammar, works 100% of the time, is 100% successful 100% of the time, when the rule one rule equal is maintained at all times, with the honor, grace, peace, neutrality, in a genuine sense, where one claims authority over oneself, and does not claim authority over anyone else. The way it works is if another contract party comes in and tries to impose some sort of trespass or create a harm or potential harm in what you construe to be a malicious fashion. Now, I'm not talking about some kind of goofy perceived harm. I'm talking about harm. I'm talking about damage. Then this grammar will stop that. 100% of the time, I have found it will stop it. If you know it, if you have a rudimentary closure on it, and you know the other mechanics that go with it, which you would learn after 
you learn and get a basis, a foundation of the grammar, the correct grammar. It works 100% of the time. Now, when you use it, you're not using it, and I use you in a, in a theoretical, hypothetical fiction sense, in a teaching manner. I'm not telling, I'm not speaking as if it's actually you. I'm using it in a teacher fashion. When you use it, you're not using it to force someone to do something. Because if you're doing that, then you're violating rule one, rule equal, and then you are the trespasser. The only time force would be used is if someone would potentially be trying to physically harm you or harm your family, and then you would force them to stop harming you or your family. You see what I'm saying? You wouldn't hypothetically just go and force someone to stop, let's say, uh, stop using incorrect sequencing on their positionals with correct sentence structure. You wouldn't stop and correct someone like that unless that incorrect positional sequencing was somehow harming you, hurting you. Oh, tell me where the incorrect positional hurt you. Show me on the chart where the incorrect positional sequencing hurt you. Tell me where using the incorrect positional hurt you on this chart. There are four positionals, four of, with, and by. Oh no, they use the positional in. Show me where it hurt you. Stop and correct. No, <laughs> that's very silly. That's not something that I do. I don't go out and demand that people stop and correct their incorrect grammar unless it's harming me. What I do is I will take grammar from those individuals who have tried in some way, shape, or form to harm me, usually through slander or lying in the public about me or even in the private. I will find those individuals, examples of those individuals' attempts at correct grammar, and I will audit them and use them as educational tools. I'm not harming them. I'm not trying to force them to stop and correct. I'm not trying to force them to do anything. I'm just auditing their grammar. And then I also offer to teach them the correct way to do it if they want to learn. But nowhere do I ever tell them to stop and correct. Because who am I to tell someone else to stop and correct if they're just minding, my own, minding their own business? Now, of course, they're not really minding their own business if they're out there with my name in their mouth slandering me. I choose to focus on the grammar, though, and that's why I do those audits that I do in the community section of my YouTube channel. And again, if you see me auditing someone's grammar and you know the name of the person that I'm auditing, it's because they have done something, they've slandered me in some way, they've publicly lied about me in some way. And so I'm just looking at their grammar and just calling them to the carpet. And of course, I can pretty much 100% guarantee, 99% guarantee, that none of these individuals would ever want to be in the same room with me or on the same platform with me in a live situation talking about the grammar. I can pretty much guarantee it. Because I... I'm pretty sure it would not go very well for them. Just based upon what I've seen and the evidence that I've accrued since 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. Examples of contracts, correct sentence structure contracts from the 90s, from the 2000s. And I use the word correct sentence structure contracts very loosely. Because of course, it's, it's, these are contracts to the best of the author's knowledge. If they don't know what they don't know, how can they know it's not correct? Unless they're aware of my channel, they're aware of what I do, they're aware of the consistency of the teaching, of the grammar teachings that I put out there. And if they're humble, 
they will come forth and stop and correct whatever they're doing for their own selves. Now, I'm not telling them to stop and correct. No. I'm saying that if they possessed humility, they conceivably would stop and correct, whether in the private or in the public, and, and, and update those contracts so that they are correct. I stop and correct all the time. I have people who don't even have closure on the grammar that will send me emails saying, hey, Jason, you know, this hyphen's in the wrong place. Or, hey, Jason, you know, this, this sentence is missing a, a concern here or a possessive. And I stop and correct. I fix it because I want to be correct with my grammar. And if they permit me to, I will give them credit in the public. I'll say their name. Most people don't want me to say their name in public, though, understandably. But I'll give credit where credit is due. Everyone makes mistakes. I don't care how many hyphens and colons you have in your name. I can guarantee you there's mistakes in your paperwork. That's why the most important thing is volition. And my volition is to be correct. And that is why I correct my mistakes when I see them. I can't really say the same for other individuals in the public that make some sort of claim of some sort of authority or power in the quantum grammar contingent. So to wrap this up and to bring it back around to the psychology The simplest way to describe the psychology of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar is to say that maintaining rule one, rule equal is vital and critical to success in gaining closure on the grammar and success in using the grammar. Volition is the most important thing behind any correct sentence structure claim. If it is your volition to force someone to do something, then that is not a correct volition if you're doing it maliciously. If that contract party is trying to harm you, trying to hurt you or a loved one, and your volition is to force them to stop, that's different. Do you see the difference? If you're violating rule one, rule equal, going around telling people, commanding them to stop and correct, commanding the media to tell the truth, that's not rule one, rule equal. That's a violation. You are trespassing on them, not the other way around. It's a very subtle (laughs) psychological condition of state, but it's one that I found that I learned myself through trial and error. Okay, here, here's a quick example. A quick continuance of the evidence for those listeners out there familiar with this scenario. As you may or may not know, a year or two ago, um, there was a certain group of people in the quantum grammar community, which we will call the quantum community, I think is what they call themselves now. They used to call themselves the Red Thumb Club. I think... I think, I'm not sure, don't quote me on this, their leader created a media command letter where they were going to send this media letter out, this letter out to all media outlets, very specific media outlets, commanding the media outlets to tell the truth or, or something or tell them to command them to release information on Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould to the public. TV stations, newspapers, whatever it was, okay? Tell me something. How successful was that campaign? How successful was that letter? Did you see Russell's name mentioned on NBC, ABC, CNBC, uh, CBS, CNN, Fox? Did you see, see it out there anywhere? Except in obscure alternative media sites? No, I certainly didn't. And my guess is the reason why is it was a violation of rule one, rule equal. How in the hell are you going to tell someone else how to do their job? How are you going to force someone to do something like that? That's a violation of rule one, rule equal. 
if you sent that letter out with the volition to force a, a, a media employee to do something that they didn't want to do, then you are the trespasser. Not them. They're doing their job feeding their family. They go to work. They come home. They have to put food on the table. Same as you. And now they got someone writing in a language that they don't even, they can't even comprehend, not only because it's quantum grammar, and if it were correct, they wouldn't comprehend it, but that media letter is an atrocious example of correct sentence structure. I mean, it's not even correct sentence structure. Mistakes all over it. It's like double incomprehensible. So that's, a, that's an example of how... It, how the psychology works or doesn't work. That media, what effect did that media command letter have? Absolutely none. No effect at all. What's been going on for the past couple of years? People talking about, oh, we got to bring forward the chief and videos about Russell filing all these claims into the Washington, D.C., the Pentagon, whatever, I don't know, what whatever else stories were told. Where are the tangible results? Tangible conclusions. Where are they? You would see them reflected in the fiction. But we don't. Are things better now than they were before those videos came out? Those claims came out? Are things better now in the media than they were before when uh, before the media command letter? Have you seen Russell's name in the mouths of the NBC anchor person? I haven't. So that's my simple and easy proof that volition is the most important thing and that you cannot force someone to do something using correct sentence structure unless they are creating a real and present danger, tangible harm to you or to a loved one. Very simple. The psychology of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. I hope this has helped. I think I'm going to not only release this as my podcast, but also include it on my psyche playlist, perhaps. Because I think it's important. It's a very important part of correct sentence structure, if not the most important part, besides learning the grammar itself. And I mean, that's another thing, you know, I, there's a lot of people out there that write me emails and I do invite the emails to ask me grammar questions. If I can answer them um, in an email, I certainly will. There are students out there that are sort of in intermediate level limbo where they have learned correct sentence structure to a point. They can't get any further. But yet they don't want to quite commit to doing a workshop with me. So they try to get me to engage with them to give them the closure they need without they themselves investing any value or anything else on their end. In other words, they're trying to get freebies. And my freebie, my gift, is my YouTube channel. Over 300 grammar videos. So if you want freebies, I took the time to invest thousands of hours in creating these videos. It's contingent upon you to invest your time and energy in studying the freebies on YouTube. Other than that, if you're serious, shoot me an email at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. We'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation where I'll be able to vet whether you are serious or not and whether you're ready to get your closure for the grammar from me if that's what you choose. And we'll go from there. Thanks for listening. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it provided some clarity on the subjects mentioned. You can email me at the email address that's uh, been screened at the bottom of your picture for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have any grammar questions, 
or if you wish to participate in a 10 to 15 minute video consult, or if you wish to apply for a Correct Grammar workshop, you can email me there. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and also my Coral Blade Grotto channel if you'd like. And always remember that authority comes from knowledge and the skill in conveying that knowledge and closure. Thanks. Change, change, change,